Hey, what's up everyone? Game Dad here, coming at you guys with part three of my current NES collection. So, we're just gonna dive right in and we're gonna check out what games are next on the list. Golgo 13 Top Secret Episode was released by Vic Tokai in 1988 and takes you on a sort of super secret spy mission in a kind of a beat em up slash platformer style game. I mean, it's okay, it's not the greatest though. The Goonies 2 was released by Konami in 1987, and this takes a kind of movie-style approach, but as you can see, the graphics aren't that great, even by NES standards, and there's just a lot of stuff going on in the game that doesn't really feel like it fits the franchise at all. Gotcha! The Sport was released by Atlas in 1987 and brings the awesome game of paintball to the NES. So this is another addition to the NES collection that actually allows for light gun use. So it's always fun to be able to find new light gun games. Gradius was released by Konami in 1986 and is an excellent example of a side-scrolling shooter on the NES. It takes you through all the classic stuff that you would expect, all kinds of different objects, power-ups, and everything that you would want to see in a shmup. Gumshoe was released by Nintendo in 1986, and this is another game that I have in the collection that is an awesome Nintendo light gun game. So in this one, you can go around shooting different things to gather up points, and you just play through all the awesome levels that it has. Gunsmoke was released by Capcom in 1988, and in this awesome NES classic game, you actually go through a old western style top-down shooter kind of game. So it's kind of fun that it shows a character instead of like a vehicle or a ship, and you just have fun blasting away at enemies. Gyromite was released by Nintendo in 1985, and this is actually one of two games that utilize Rob, or the Robot Operating Buddy. And in this game, it uses a series of flashes of lights. That way it can control Rob to raise and lower different platforms so you can get through the levels. Up next, we have Heavy Barrel, released by Data East in 1990. And in this game, it feels to me like it's kind of like a top-down Contra game on the NES, but you go through in a vertical scrolling kind of way. So also kind of like Jackal or other games of that type. Up next, we have Heavy Shredden, released by Imagineering in 1990, and in this game, you just get to snowboard and bomb down that mountain. Now, I didn't really think that the controls were very good in this game. It was a little weird, kind of kept dragging to one side or the other, but overall, I mean, it was okay. High Speed was released by Rare in 1991, and in this game you get to go through and play some classic pinball action. Now overall, I don't think the graphics are very good, even by NES standards in this game, and the way they do the split screen is a little weird, but I mean, it is pinball. Holy Diver was released by Irem in 2018, and this one is actually a worldwide re-release of the original Holy Diver that used to only be a Famicom game. Now, in this game, you take over as Dio, and you just play through a Castlevania-style game. It's actually really fun. The Hunt for Red October was released by Beam Software in 1991, and in this game, you are basically playing through the plot of the movie, The Hunt for Red October. Up next, we have Ikari Warriors, released by Micronix in 1987, and in this game, it is another classic top-down kind of shooter game, vertical scrolling, a lot like Jackal and many of the other games that were out at this time. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom was released by Tengen in 1988, and this one was actually quite a bit more fun than some of the other Indiana Jones games, in my opinion. You actually got some whip action that you got to do, and the gameplay just felt a little more solid overall. Infiltrator was released by Mindscape in 1990, and this game kind of feels like a battle zone or like the old vector tank games, but the premise is you're actually driving a helicopter, even though the overall gameplay mechanics feel very similar to tank games. Up next, we have Isolated Warrior, released by KID, or KID, in 1991, and the best way that I can really describe this game is kind of like a vertical shmup meets a beat-em-up. And, I mean, it is pretty fun, but overall, I didn't really care for it. And up next, we have Jack Nicklaus's Greatest 18 Holes of Major Championship Golf, released by Sculptured Software in 1990. That is a very long-winded title for a game that is not very good, in my opinion. I mean, it's just a golf game on the NES, and 
I didn't find it very appealing. Up next, we have Jackal, released by Konami in 1988. And I have already referenced this a couple of times in this video, but that is mainly because this is one of my favorite games of this type on the NES. It's just classic shooting action going around in that Jeep. And here we have Jeopardy! Junior Edition, released by Rare in 1989. And this is exactly what you would expect. It's a Jeopardy! game, but it has several easier questions for juniors to play, for a bunch of kids to be able to play. So, still fun, but kind of simplistic. And here we have John Elway's Quarterback, released by Leland Corporation in 1989. And as with most sports games, I'm just not really that big of a fan. I mean, at least I knew who John Elway was this time. But overall, I don't really get the appeal of games like this. Up next, we have Jordan vs. Bird, one-on-one, -on -one, released by Rare in 1989. And in this game, you get some classic one-on-one -on -one half court action, and you're playing as two of basketball's greats. You got Larry Bird and Michael Jordan. So you just get to have some classic fun shooting some hoops. And here we have another Wisdom Tree game. That is Joshua and the Battle of Jericho, released by Wisdom Tree in 1992. And this one is just kind of like a uh, low lows adventure kind of game. So you go through, you have some puzzle stuff you got to do, collect some items, and then reach the exit. And that's pretty much it. And up next, we have another classic from the Age of Atari, and that is Joust, released by HAL Laboratory in 1988. This takes the same classic gameplay that was originally on the Atari 2600 and gives it that sweet, sweet 8-bit upgrade. As you can see, the colors are really nice. And here we have Karate Champ, released by Data East in 1986. And unlike a few of the other games that are of this nature on the NES, this one actually controls pretty well. I mean, it's very simplistic, but overall, I mean, when you try to hit someone, it actually hits them. And here we have The Karate Kid, released by Atlas in 1987, but unfortunately this is also an LJN game. And, oh man, does this game suck. The knockback from enemies alone is just enough to make you just want to rip your hair out. Up next we got another homebrew, and that is Kelbert, released by John Riggs. Now I'm not sure when he originally made this game, but I think it's been in the past couple of years or so. But this game is essentially Qbert, but with all the characters and people from Metal Jesus Rocks. And up next is one of my personal favorites from the NES days. That is Kid Icarus, released by Nintendo in 1987. And in this game, you go through vertical platforming as opposed to the traditional side-scrolling platforming. So it's a fun take on a classic style of gaming. And here we have Kid Nicky Radical Ninja, released by Toast in 1987. And this game is very simplistic looking. I mean, I really think they could have done a better job with the sprites and stuff, but you just go through, you're kind of beating people up, doing some platforming, and just having a little bit of fun. Here is another unlicensed NES game. That is King of Kings, The Early Years, released by Wisdom Tree in 1991. And this one takes you through three different kind of story type things. You got some difficulty settings, etc. And you just go through and do some platforming with their typical fast gameplay. Up next, we've got Kings of the Beach, released by Konami in 1990. And this one has a very skate or die kind of feel to it with this whole menu overworld. But then overall, I mean, it's just a classic beach volleyball game. And here we have the game that gave Kirby an upgrade. That is Kirby's Adventure, released by HAL Laboratory in 1993. And in this game, you get all the same classic action as Kirby's Dreamland, but in full color. And now you have the option to actually maintain abilities that you steal from different enemies. Here we have Knight Rider, released by Pack-In Video in 1989. And this game, in my opinion, is totally boring. You go around, you can shoot stuff, and you can drive. That's basically it. I didn't get very far into the game. And another martial arts game, that is Kung Fu, released by Nintendo in 1985. And in this game, it's kind of just a side-scrolling beat-em-up. But it's kind of weird because instead of scrolling left to right, you actually scroll right to left. So I thought that was a different take on this kind of genre. Up next is Laser Invasion, released by Konami in 1991. And in this game, you are piloting kind of like a like fighter jet sort of thing. And you are just shooting down all the enemies that you can find. Feels kind of like a futuristic top gun. 
And a Disney classic on NES indeed. That is The Little Mermaid, released by Capcom in 1991. And in this game, it has a very Echo the Dolphin feel, but obviously not as good, considering it came out long before Echo the Dolphin. Now here is a game that I played a lot as a kid. That is Little Nemo the Dream Master, released by Capcom in 1990. And this was just a fun action platforming kind of game. You could go up, down, side to side, and you could absorb all kinds of different enemies and get suits made out of them. And the last game for this video is Log Jammers, released by Mega Cat Studios in, I believe, 2018. And in this game, it's kind of like Pong, but they can catch and throw it back at you, and you're actually using axes while walking on logs. So there you have it everyone, that is everything that is in part 3 of my current NES collection. Now we are halfway through this current series of collection videos, so be sure to let me know down in the comments below. What do you think of these videos? What do you think of my NES collection so far? And while you're down there, please also be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, as well as that little notification bell so you can alert every time I got a new video coming out. Now, as always, I'm Game Dad. I thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you later.